All right, so we'll be looking at what the pharmacology of false connect. Uh, we get to see that false connect is a drug that can be used to treat what cytomegalovirus A infections. Okay, so we'll be looking at the pharmacology of this drug and um, basically how it works, um, its side effects, and all those a beautiful story about the false connect drugs. Okay, so pharmacology of false connect drug, which is an anti cytomegalovirus agent. Okay, so this has first kind of, uh, could look like this one is for injection. It's called a first kind of sodium injection. Okay, this can be used to treat what anti cytomegalovirus um, infections. So uh, the pharmacology of first kind of is as follows: um, mechanism of action. First kind of is a pyrophosphate analog, and it inhibits the viral DNA polymerase and reverse transcriptase enzymes okay thereby it will prevent what viral replication do you understand so this is how first kind it works um first kind it this is first kind okay to basically stop what um it will basically stop uh proliferation of the virus okay by um Inhibiting the conversion of monophosphate to a diphosphate, okay, in the viral um, cycle. So, for the antiviral activity, um, first, uh, first kind has in vitro activity against what herpes virus that's a type 1, um, type, type 1, type 2, and the varicella or zoster virus. Then, it also has activities on the world. Human immunodeficiency virus. It also has activities on the hepatitis B virus. Okay. Absorption um, is given intravenous. Okay, that's why I got this. I guys to see that most of these drugs is the liquid given intravenous. When it's given intravenous, it's rapidly absorbed. Okay. So distribution now. Uh, the volume of distribution is about what, 0 0.7 to 1.3 liters per kilogram. Uh, the protein binding for the ability of it to actually bind to protein for transport is just less than 10% of it to bind to protein. Okay, metabolism it is not metabolized. Excretion, uh, renal excretion is about what 80 to 90 percent within 24 hours. Okay, half life it has a half life of about what, two to six hours. All right, so let's look at this again. Blocked by phosphonates. Right? Basically, all of them will act toward um, terminating viral replication. Okay? So what is the use? Uh, it can be used for treatment of what? Cytomegalovirus retinitis in patients with what? AIDS. That's the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Right? So if you have AIDS and you have what? Cytomegalovirus, what? retinitis you can use what the uh, first kind of drugs then it can also be used to treat what acute herpes zoster infections that's shingles it can also be used to treat what um, herpes simplex virus infections in what immunocompromised patients those are patients that already have their immune system weak okay then it can also be used for what herpes labia labialis okay they can also be given as a prophylaxis against what cytomegalovirus um, infections in patients that have or transplant you know when you have transplant uh, they give you some immunosuppressors so that um, it will force your immune system to accept the organ that was transported to you okay so people that have transplants they are undergoing um, immunosuppressive treatments and basically they have a weak immune system do you understand so you can be giving it as a prophylaxis what is prophylaxis um, you give it like as a vaccination before time to prevent a disease condition. Okay, it's a first candidate. Contraindications. All right, um, individuals that have renal impairment, you shouldn't use first candidate because what most of first candidate is what excreted through the urine. So if you have renal impairment and you are given a drug that over eighty percent to ninety percent of it is excreted through the urine, then you might have what toxicity or accumulation of this drug in your body. Then seizure disorders. Right? If you have seizure disorders, you don't use the first candidate on them. 
then um, if the patient has a hypersensitivity toward phoscanids or any component of the formulation, you shouldn't use the medication on them. All right. So phoscanid is administered what intravenously, and dosage and administration should be what individualized based on the patient needs and the renal function of the patient. Just like I told you guys, uh, let me go back to here. Excretion. Over 80 to 90 percent of first kind is excreted through the renal. So you don't want to give it to somebody who has a renal impairment because the drugs will be held back in the body. Do you understand? So that's it about what the pharmacology of first kind of I'm talking about the mechanism of action, antiviral activity, uh, clinical uses, distribution. It was all fun. Okay, so see you guys in the next drug.